Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video about my college experience, my grades in high school, the classes I took, extracurricular, and how I was able to go to my dream college with not the best grades. So for those who don't know, I go to UC Davis. I'm currently a mathematics major and I'm going to be in my sophomore year of college. My high school was uh, fairly small. We only had 300 and something graduating seniors. I was top 12 in the school. I was first ranked in school for a long time, uh, but until junior year, I decided to slack off and my grades got worse. I still managed to have a 3.8 GPA. And I'm gonna tell you guys that my grades were not the best. I did not have the best SAT or AP scores or even the best ACT scores. So let me tell you guys when it's not impossible to get into your dream colleges, you just kind of have to work your way around the application system. So this includes being a well-rounded student, which I was also not a well-rounded student. So let's just start with my grades and the scores that I got in high school. So before I mention my grades, I just want to say that I was in AVID and AVID is a program that helps first generation low income students uh, go to college and stay in college. So if you ever feel like you need that extra support, having um, a support system that's going to guide you to college because none of your parents have ever been in college and you're able to join AVID, I think it's a perfect program for you guys. I think you should definitely join it. I love it so much. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my transcripts right here at the grades that I got my freshman year of high school. See, I had really good grades, but I also didn't take any AP classes. So that kind of um, was a weak point. Normally, you have to take Math 1 as a freshman, but I remember I was taking Math 1 and I was like, this stuff is really, really easy. And I was like, I didn't take the summer course. So if you had taken the summer course, you're able to take Math 2 in freshman year i wasn't able to take the summer course because i didn't have a ride to school in the summer so i had gone to my counselor and i had said um i want to be able to take calculus in senior year and if i take math one right now as a freshman i'm not going to be able to do that so is there something that i can do right now so that i can skip a math grade and counselor was like nope there's absolutely no way the only way for you to take math two right now as a freshman is if you had taken that course in the summer the, another way you could do is take the final for the class and pass it with flying colors so pretty much she's saying you need to pass the final for the class with an a and she says that normally people don't pass it because it's just a hard final because it's everything that you've learned in that one year in that class and you're taking it in the beginning of the first week so most likely you're not gonna pass it oh just go ahead and give me the test because i feel like everything i was learning in that week was like super easy and she was like okay i'll let your teacher know and you we can schedule a time for you I took the final and i got a 92 percent so i was able to get placed into a math 2 class so that's how I was able to take calculus in my last year of high school. And it's really hard to like think about your future and plan that far ahead. But I recommend that if you guys are looking forward to taking uh, AP classes and you should really look and plan your classes out early on and see what classes you need to take now to be able to take those classes uh, further on. So now moving on to 10th grade. So this is my grades for sophomore year. As you can see, they were also perfect grades. That's also when I decided to take world history. And let me tell you guys, it was a really hard class, but during that time, it was a lot of self-learning and I've never really done that before. And I'm also super bad at history. I don't know why I took that class. However, I did get a two on the AP exam and I actually was not surprised because it was a really hard class. I didn't really learn much. It was just reading off the textbook and I'm not a very good self learner. Sophomore year of high school was also when I decided to do extracurricular activities. I had joined DSF, which stands for California Scholarship Federation and HS, which is National Honor Society. So with these clubs, I was able to be forced into doing um, community service if I wanted to stay in the club. That's how I was able to rack up a good amount of community service by just volunteering here and there but for the most part I spent most of my time working and during this time I was working at a boba shop to save up some money because I had just turned 16. I also forgot to mention that this is the year that I joined track and field because because my counselor had told me that if I wanted to get into UC Davis I needed to be a well-rounded student and in order to do that I had to not only had good grades but also to do sports and extracurricular activities so this is when I decided that I was going to join a sport but I didn't know what sport to join because I wasn't good in any of the sports because I never did it so this is when I decided to do shot put and discus because I felt like it was just throwing so it wasn't that hard and I actually really loved it it was super fun I had a great time I was not the best player of course because I just joined I was super beginner I didn't even know what a shot put was um, but I had a really good time with my team and I learned a lot 
I also managed to lose a lot of weight during track, so that was a plus as well. I just want to mention that during the summer before my junior year, I'd also done something called CSI in the summer where we helped uh, incoming freshmen from middle school come into my high school to be able to do summer bridge courses so that they're able to get ahead when they start in high school. I was able to earn up to 300 hours of community service, which was, was a big plus into my whole college application. So I recommend if you guys were able to do anything that um, is like a program that gives you guys community service, I totally recommend it. It's like a really fast and easy way to get your uh, to get your hours in. And it's like, you don't even feel like you're doing um, community service because you're like having so much fun um, TAing and just meeting new people that it doesn't even feel like it. I was also given credit for this, for the Summer Bridge program, which I didn't even know that I was given credit for. And they also gave me a grade, so I think that boosted up my GPA. So moving on to my junior year, my junior year, which I'm gonna leave my grades here as well. So AP language was obviously really hard for me. I'm English is my second language. I I still struggle to this day on how to read and write. Um, it's not like I struggle on it, but I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it as much as I wish I would. Um, but I decided to tell, I told myself like, I'm just gonna take this class and see where it takes me. And if I, hopefully it's gonna help me learn to be a better writer. When I took the AP exam for English, I had gotten a two. And for physics, I had gotten a one because physics was really hard for me. I had not taken calculus yet. And I feel like calculus and physics just goes hand in hand. I was super confused. I didn't know what was going on, um, but I still managed to get an A in the class because I tried so hard, you guys. I literally would go to all of the Saturday schools and all of the extra help. I would stay after school every single day. And I really, really tried to pass and understand this class. But for the first time, like for the sake of me, I just could not understand what's going on in physics. Moving on to my senior year of high school as you can see my grades got super bad I didn't even try at all for any of my classes and the reason was because my counselor had told me that colleges only look at your 10th and 11th grade I don't even know if that's true or not I was just like oh like I'm chilling like I already did so much I'm just gonna sit back and just see if I get accepted into college which I totally do not recommend like I shouldn't have done that because my GPA would have been a lot higher um anyways also, my calculus teacher had told me that if you got an A in the AP exam, she was going to change any of your grade, even if it was an F, back to an A. And I had gotten a 4 on my AP exam for calculus, and I don't know why my grade is still a C. My senior year, I didn't do any sports. I didn't join any clubs. Oh, I also want to mention that in junior year of high school, I also joined Bachata and Cumbia. Um, it was just like a little dance multicultural thing that I did for myself. Gave like a good touch to my application. I also did avid president in my junior year and senior year of high school. So yeah, that's kind of like the total grades um, GPA wise that I got in high school. Now moving on to SAT and ACT scores. My ACT score in 12th year of high school and I got an 1100. Um, I know it's not the best grade and like I said, I still got into college so I don't know how that happened. Um, my ACT score was also horrible as well. I only got like a 21 and it was like super bad. I didn't prep for any of these tests because I just didn't have any resources. There was no class for that. My mom didn't have money to put me into SAT preps like other students did so that's another reason why my scores weren't the best and I honestly felt like I could have done more to make my grades better so if you guys are still in high school I recommend you guys um, seeking out those opportunities if your school has them or simply just going online and see what kind of free courses that you can take and just review for the SAT that's kind of another reason why I didn't do that good on my test because I didn't prep for it but at the same time I'm not a big fan of these uh, SATs and ACTs tests because I just feel like they don't really test your intelligence because these tests test you the same basis as everybody else on the same topic. Like say it tests you on pre-algebra, but you're currently in like a calculus AB, you're simply not gonna remember as much geometry knowledge as somebody in geometry class. So I think that's just really unfair to test a simple baseline math for everybody. But at the same time, I feel like our education system needs a lot of reforming. Um, but yeah, I just don't believe in these tests. So hopefully in the future, they can change it somehow. That was kind of my high school statistics and extracurricular activities. As you can see, I didn't do that much stuff at all. So with that being said, 
said, when I had applied to college, I had what well, I was given uh, four fee waivers for CSUs and four for UCs. So I had applied to a total of nine colleges and I didn't pay a single penny for any of the application fees because I only wanted to use the fee waivers. When I was deciding which colleges that I wanted to apply to, I simply went on Google and I searched UC on map. And the first picture that popped up, I'll put it right here. And I decided that four universities that was closest to San Jose, those were that was the ones that I was going to apply to. So which be, which meant UC Berkeley, UC Davis, UC Merced, and UC Santa Cruz. And those were the four UCs that I used my fee waivers on. And I didn't apply to any of the SoCal ones because I knew that I wasn't gonna go there anyway. For the four CSUs, I did the same exact thing. I searched up uh, CSUs on map, and I decided that I was gonna apply to San Jose State, Stanislaus. East Bay and Sonoma. I also used my four fee waivers on here so I didn't have to pay a single penny on any of the college application fees. And the one private school that I applied to was St. Mary's. And the reason why I applied to that school was because they had sent me an email and they were like, oh, you have priority registration, just go ahead and apply. And we'll let you know in a couple of weeks uh, whether or not you're in. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's like super easy of a process. Like I should just apply because it's free. So I applied and all I had to do was just enter my email, um, give a quick description of my high school and just like very broad information. So I just did that really super easy fast. It felt like I was signing up for like a subscription. Um, but pretty much at the end of the week, they already gotten back with an email saying that I got accepted. And that was my first ever acceptance letter. So I was like super shocked that I had gotten in. Um, but I didn't want to go there because the tuition was just like way off the roof. I pretty much got all the acceptance letter rolling in um, pretty kind of at the same time for CSUs. And that's when I discovered that I got accepted into four of the CSUs. And I also got accepted into UC Merced around the same time. However, I was denied at UC Berkeley and I was also waitlisted at UC Davis and UC Santa Cruz. And there is this, during this time, I had felt super sad that I was waitlisted for Davis. And I told myself like, if I didn't go to UC Davis, I was just gonna go to the nearest community college and just transfer through the TAG program. I already planned everything out. I had already made sure that I scheduled an appointment at the community college. And I just did everything that I was supposed to do as if I was going to community college. Time, it was really stressful for me because I constantly thought about what if I got into UC Davis? What if UC Davis accepted me? Am I gonna drop everything I planned and just go to UC Davis like what am I gonna do when I got accepted into UC Davis it was at work and I just like got on my phone to look at my emails real quick and it was like an email from UC Davis that's like congratulations like you got in and I was just like super super hyped at the end of the day I still really had to think about the decision and whether or not the money was worth going to UC Davis Ever since I had turned 16 I started working and I've never stopped working because I had told myself that college is not gonna be cheap and I'm gonna keep saving money because I don't want money to be an issue when it comes to college let me tell you guys if you're thinking about going to community to college because you just didn't get into the school that you wanted to there's literally no shame in going to community college it's like one of the best options and if i hadn't gone to uc davis because that's my dream school i would have completely been fine with going to community college because you still get to the same place that you want to be you still get the same career that you want to be the only difference is you're paying less money in community college so don't hate on community college another thing that i want to mention is that i feel like one of the reasons why i was accepted into uc davis despite my grades being really low is because of the PIQ questions that i decided to choose and i had known that i wanted to go to uc ever since i was in freshman year of high school so that's when i decided that i wanted to start all my PIQ questions and so if you guys didn't know you get a total they offer you a total of eight questions and you're able to choose four and every single questions you're offered 350 words to answer your question so with these questions it's really difficult to be able to fit your whole life story into but there's a lot of resources online that i'd recommend looking up and just and just reading sample questions and seeing what you can gather from those and just have people proofread it over and over and over again like you just have like 20 people read them and just constantly look it over look over anything you can if you know somebody that is going to the college that you want to go to send them your piq questions and be like hey can you read them and let me know what you think find creative ways to express who you are because it's really hard to get these people to understand who you are because they're constantly going so through so many applications a day just constantly looking at numbers and the only way for them to actually get to know who you are is by reading these PIQ questions. So at the end of the video I just want to say that no matter what school you get into I hope you guys find your place. I think it's very important to know that you're doing great in college. I know a lot of people who suffer with imposter syndrome and I can honestly say that I'm one of them because it's so easy to feel like you don't belong in college because of your grades. 
comparing yourself to other people and how they're thriving in college and you're struggling but everybody has their own path because college is not for everybody and if college is not for you then figure out something else you want to do with that being said that's the end of my video i hope that helped you guys and stay tuned for more videos coming up